Welcome to Adventures of an Old Sea Dog. On this episode, I'm on the river, taking a little trip, and then I sort out my new charger for the anchor, get myself a new engine, and something very pink happens. Beautiful day today here in the marina, and uh, the, the sewing circle is in full swing. But we're not here just to film them. No, don't click off the channel. This is not what we're here to see. Something else was afoot. It's all happening today. Just when you thought that the uh, the, sew the sewing circle was the height and... I got that wrong. Let me start again. <laughs> when you thought that the sewing circle was the highlight of the day, you'd be wrong. Here at the marina, there's always something new. And today it's a giant flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mo, while you're doing that, if I could interview you yeah. about your gi giant flamingo, or flaming oh, Mo, as we yeah, call it. Yeah, flamingo. So, Mo. what was the idea behind this? Um, gin and tonic. <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would be nicer than having a gin and tonic on a pink flamingo? That's the one. <laughs> It's amazing what kind of technical problems you have in blowing up a, a pink flamingo. But we've uh, sorted it all out. International electric sockets and plugs and so on. It's even got a toilet, look. Does this bit have a separate erection? Yeah. That looks almost comical. <laughs> yes, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you enjoying that? <laughs> oh, I found a problem, Mo. What? It says here, warning, use under only competent supervision. <laughs> That's not you, is it? <laughs> to be fair, what else is there to do on a Friday afternoon in, in the, the first sunny day of the year? And we're not even drunk. Everybody here is completely sober and being responsible, but we're blowing up a giant pink thing. And if you want to see more of the pink flamingo, stick around till the end of the video. Another wiring day today. Finally getting around to wiring up my charging system for the anchor windlass. Yes, it's a bit of a, a spider's web in there. Got fuses for the system. I could put one in here and one down the other end of the ship and then we go live. There's the doohickey and there's the other uh, uh, fuse connector. I had to put that in there now. Turn everything back on and check the smoke. I don't think it's working. All right. Well, that's not, that's not doing anything. Time to check everything and get the meter out. Some of the instructions for this are pretty straightforward and then there's a lot of it that is written by people who understand what they're talking about but uh, can't relate it to you in a simple way. There it is there, it's charging. There is a little light that's on that tells me it's working. I put the meter on it and everything and uh, it appears to be working. Then there's this thing called an electronic screwdriver. You put that in and you stick it there and some lights flash and you're supposed to be able to program it. But I can't make head and tail of it. Um, I think I've got it right. Yes, had I known how much work was involved in doing this, I think I might have paid somebody to do it for me. And then that's gonna go in there. I'm a genius. And there you go, job finished, nice and tidy. I had to laugh yesterday. I had to go off the boat just after I'd finished some of the wiring. And um, I'm always a little bit scared because I'm not an electrician that I make sure I've done it right. So I said to Timo, uh, who's on uh, opposite me in, in his boat, I said, mate, can you just watch out for smoke? If you see any smoke, um, well, I don't know what you can do, but just uh, if you see any smoke, give me a call. 
Here's a little tip for you. Um, when you're doing wiring or you're doing something, you're not sure if you're taking something apart, it doesn't have to be wiring, whatever, take a photograph of it with your phone because I had to disassemble some stuff I'd taken ages to work out how to do before and put it back together again. Um, so I took a photograph of it and it's great. You just, you just look at, see what you've done. So yeah, uh, photograph something. If you're not sure how it's gonna go back together, photograph it before you take it apart. Good tip. Meanwhile, in a car park, I've been trying to find this path for six months and people keep saying, oh, it's here or it's there, and I have not been able to find it. I think this might be it, actually. People told me about a fabulous trail uh, on the other side of town, but I always had trouble finding it. Aha, so I think I've found it. Huh. Well, this is getting interesting. There's a lot of mangroves here and uh, they kind of done a walkway through the mangroves and it's very, very beautiful. Take a look at this. It's sort of Jurassic Park meets Municipal Park kind of thing, you know? This reminds me of the first ever episode of Old Sea Dog called The Beginning, when I walked along a walkway like this uh, in Alvorn, Portugal, the day before I went to see Shaddy for the first time. And that was um, quite a while ago. I've lost count of time now, five years or something. And here I am doing the same thing on uh, another walkway exactly halfway around the world from there and we're still going brilliant well can see the end of the road and there's nothing but a creek and some bush here for the life of me, I, I cannot understand what people are saying to me. They end at the end of the road, the path continues along the river. And there's a creek here, you can't even get to the river from here. There's actually a navigation thing way back in the bush there. <laughs> I think that's taking things a bit far. You'd never get a boat in here. Just about to admit defeat and go home and moan and bitch about it, when all of a sudden I saw this. They did say it was a secret passage. End of road, secret passage. You just gotta love the houses here in New Zealand. Oh, this will probably kill me. Well, I wanted to get the heart pumping today. Too many lazy days. How's that for an entrance to the house? You see, it's such a clean country, only in New Zealand do you have to scrub when you go into a forest. Yes. Stop, scrub, spray. This is almost like a secret garden. I'm just going to walk a ways into the jungle. I've done this before in other countries. You just you just go somewhere and get lost. It's just so beautiful. It's, it's peaceful here. I kind of needed this. I had a bit of a few months where uh, if things were just not going right and um, and now all of a sudden the sun shines it's amazing how nice the world becomes and all your problems disappear with a beautiful little walk through a jungle on a sunny day I don't ever want to leave don't say that I'll probably drop dead here and nobody will find me if with Barry God, he's in the jungle somewhere.
seem to have gone off piste a little bit here. <laughs> I'm well and truly lost at the moment. I've just passed some people coming the other way. Um, a guy and two girls and a kid with a ukulele <laughs> in the middle of the jungle. There's a ukulele in the jungle. Instead of getting too far away from the river, I need to be by the river to find my way home. People give me things occasionally because they like what they see on the videos that I do. Now, this is from a special friend, uh, Anne, who I actually went to school with a long, long time ago. She heard I was at sea uh, all by myself and uh, needed a bit of looking after. You won't believe just how useful these are. It's basically a thermal mug with a wide neck. Uh, so it's for food, the idea being that you prepare your food below, put it in there, keep it warm, and when the weather gets rough, uh, you can have yourself something hot to drink. This, on the other hand, is for fun. This is a Stein designed to keep your beer cold. Gonna try this baby out. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Should tilt it up really when you pour it, but I haven't got two hands. Not quite two cans. I'm going to christen this baby right now. They took a while to arrive from the States to New Zealand. Yeah. They went via Tokyo for some reason, but worth the wait. And thank you very, very much. You've just improved the quality of my life. That's the dog's bollocks. Going on a little expedition down a river. That's if this baby works. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Hello, mate. What you up to? What you doing? <laughs> Why are all animals in my life always called Charlie? It was time to take a little expedition down the river to have a look at an outboard engine. I'm not sure this is a good idea. Uh, it keeps stalling. I don't know why, but I'm going to go down and see about another engine. A friend of mine has uh, another engine for sale. Uh, this one will be okay when I get it sorted. The old two engines are going to disappear uh, and we're going to get ourselves a new engine. Uh, this one doesn't seem to want to do anything. You put any power on it, it gets like a fuel starvation thing going on. I'm sure it's uh, fixable, but uh, on another day. I'm busy at the moment. So we're going to take a look at this, this other engine down the river. But the thing is, uh, it's going to get dark fairly soon, so I don't want to hang around. I certainly don't want to break down in the river. I shouldn't have said that, should I? On my way back, got this beauty in the boat. The owners kindly lent me it for a few days and just to try it out, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, but it's a bit late now, so I'm gonna take it back and uh, that'll be the end of the day. We'll maybe put it on tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some speed out of this thing. <laughs> Great. Keep running, you. Do not stop. Now, I, can, I can hear it misfiring now. The engine that we've just been running is a two-stroke, three and a half horsepower. With those, you have to add oil to the fuel. The engine that we've just brought back in the boat is a Yamaha, six horsepower, four-stroke. The idea of having a second engine, a more powerful engine, six horsepower in this case, is that when it's paired with the dinghy, which is a rib, has a hard bottom, 
uh, it'll take us up on the plane. It means we can go faster and further. And that's good for exploring. Meantime, what I'm concentrating on is not dropping the engine in the sea. This looks precarious, and it is. But there's no real other way of mounting an engine on a boat, especially when you're by yourself. Notice my right hand is hanging onto it for life. I don't want this going in the sea. Not until the toggles, the tightening uh, nuts there, are tight. Uh, is it going to be safe? And uh, that we're getting to that point now. Yes, nice and firm. We're good. And I'll be testing out this beast in the next episode. Meanwhile, let's go back to the other pontoon and see how Mr. Pinky is getting on. It's not a sight you see every day. Can you guess what it is, ladies and gentlemen? We're getting close. Nearly there. This is the penultimate. This is this is the the coup de gras. It's coming alive! Well, hello, Flamingmo. Hello, Flamingmo. <laughs> Flamingmo. That's one Flamingmo there. Ah. Oh. for this one. I don't know. Have you tried the toilet yet? Does that work? Hold on. Yeah, check it's, the toilet. It's girls, yeah? Oh, it's Yeah, it's full of girls. It's meant to. You wouldn't believe it if you, you know. No. <laughs> hey, uh, you employed me, all right? Yeah, Remember I know. That? I know. Thank you to Mo for being a great sport, and thank you to Carl for giving him the time off to do this. If you haven't done already, I'd love you to subscribe. Don't forget to press the notifications button. Uh, that way you'll be told every time a new Sea Dog video comes out. Please thumbs up and subscribe. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you to my wonderful patrons for being there and supporting me. Uh, if you'd like to become a patron, check out links below. <laughs>